Hi, it's Jeff. And Denise from MouseSteps.com. And this is episode number 216. 216. Of Mouse Steps Weekly. Sponsored by MEI Travel and Mouse Fan Travel. The Mouse Fan Travel website lists a variety of offers, including for Walt Disney World, Disneyland, and Alani. And you can sign up for their newsletter and request a quote on the website. And my favorite time of year is coming up at Epcot. The Flower Epcot, and Garden, yes. Yes, the Epcot Flower and Garden Festival. So this is a time to really start thinking about spring travel. Also, the All Ears That Net weekly newsletter. Once a month, the All Ears free newsletter is a bits and bytes issue, which catches everyone up on the month ahead. Uh, in this issue, they have a step back in time feature, and it's all about Mr. Toad and his wild ride. Love Mr. Toad. And it used to be at Walt Disney World. Now it's just at Disneyland. Um, also, Steve Barrett is a regular in Bits and Bites, and he shares recent hidden Mickey alerts, including, I believe it was at Kadani or Jumbo House. I don't remember which mm-hmm, one. Mm-hmm. And uh, also featured is a souvenirs piece on Epcot's Festival of the Arts, cast member magical moments, and much more. And information like refurbishment schedules, which I have to keep up with. It's really hard to keep up with it here. So that is a very helpful addition to the newsletter. So be sure to check out the show notes for full information on how to subscribe. And again, it is totally free. It is totally free. And I like that. So this week, we're up bright and early for the Magic Kingdom. We're going to be there for opening. Uh, We were shooting to get there for the full uh, 8 o'clock hour. Uh, Between 8 and 9 o'clock, they're letting you into Main Street USA now. And it didn't really matter that we weren't there first thing. We did use a pass holder entrance. It didn't matter. There was nobody Nobody there. And I like this better than the train station show because it just feels so much nicer and safer to come into the park this way. Well, look at the vehicles. I love that the main street vehicles are kind of out and ready for you. Although they didn't open until nine o'clock, you could have your choice on riding all of them, any and all of them. Well, at actually, I think at eight o'clock, the the horse-drawn trolley did go. So that one uh, that one car did go. Correct, correct. I was talking about the motorized oh, vehicles. Oh, well, you, you have to motorized. say that. And we will get a chance to uh, check out our favorite omnibus later, and uh, we'll talk about that. But getting back to your point about the uh, the way the Magic Kingdom opens now, at least currently, from 8 to 9, everybody is just let in. It's very relaxed and enjoyable. I think it, uh, I agree, it's better. Although the train station entrance show, I think, is more exciting than the new show, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Well, I just, you know, I like being able to walk down Main Street. It's not busy. Um, you know, when you are outside with a train train station show, it was just packed. Right. And this is just, a, for me, a very relaxing way to walk into the Magic Kingdom. Just like going to, like, Disneyland Paris um, or Disneyland. Exactly. I mean, it's very similar to that now. And as you just saw, the Emporium is having a little exterior refurbishment. You can see that in the background. Oh, look at this, though. It's 20 of uh, 9 o'clock, so we better hurry up, make our way down Main Street to see the new welcome show. Although I ended up in the very front row, so you don't have to be there that early to get a good spot. And I didn't know which shops were open, but there is a lot. Almost everything has their doors open, so I like that. So here we have a sign for the early breakfast check-in. We're not doing breakfast today. We're going to head over to the right, though, and show some of the lines the early lines to get on the rides. And here we have just a smattering of people ready to do the uh, Tomorrowland dash here. But the big line, I think the biggest line of all is this one going into Fantasyland. And I would guess most people are running to either Mine Train or uh, Peter Peter Pan. Pan. Or some of the other attractions, certainly, but especially mine trains since that line gets so long. And by the time the welcome show is done, this is very far back, very, very far back. Now you can see a very small line over here waiting to go to Haunted Mansion or New Orleans Square, whatever. But uh, did I say New Orleans Square? I meant Liberty (laughs) Liberty Liberty Square. Square. See, this whole setup makes me think I'm at Disneyland. Uh, Anyway, in this day here, you could see the very end of the castle lights are, uh, are still there but they're almost all off well it's been you know a month just about a month at this point since uh, the christmas has ended and here comes lady llewellyn who looks very familiar to kick off to kick off the welcome show the brand new welcome show and uh, again i mentioned uh, actually when i came up here it was not that busy for me either and i showed up really at the very last second i didn't want front row because for me photos aren't good in the front row Mm -hmm. so i tend to stay back a little bit where there's a little bit of elevation. Correct, correct. And here is the big cheese himself. 
itself. It's a very short show. It's only about five minutes, and uh, but it's nice. You know, it's it's a it's a fun show. It's more uh, more exciting in person than it is watching it online. I'll tell you that because I'd watch some videos to get an idea of it before we did this. But uh, I don't know, it just doesn't have the same excitement to me as the uh, train station show because it lacks having the family of the day and seeing all the characters come in on the train was pretty exciting. But again, this is nice. You still get a chance to see quite a few characters. Well, after this was over, Jeff and I, you know, then, you know, met each other afterwards because we're in different locations and we were both like, well, that wasn't bad, you know, because, you know, there's been such mixed reviews and um, I I enjoyed it. So it is a lot. It's very heavy in the princess, except for one princess. Well, we it's know. interesting here is you have the fairy godmother who it's actually it's actually nice to see her back. She used to always be here for the holidays for the uh, Cinderella's holiday wish. So uh, I thought that was kind of nice. We've seen Olaf in that spot mm -hmm. the last few years. But also you have the stepsisters, but no Cinderella. It is, it is kind of unusual not to have Cinderella, but you have almost all the other princesses, including uh, Princess Elena of Avalor, who yes. made her debut last year. So, of course, I was in the front row concentrating on recording the show. You were further back. Tell me about your experience. There were quite a few guests in front of me uh, watching the show, but I, I don't know if it's half and half, where, other, you know, the guests who are waiting to get into the lands... So a lot of guests are waiting, but some are watching. So, you know, it's kind of an interesting mix of people, but it didn't feel that busy. So at the end of the show, do most people right away start running, kind of pushing to go to the lands or was it relatively like calm? I mean, you could see here goes, I like seeing all the people go through the moat. It reminds me of opening day at Disneyland, the, the old videos you'd see, the black and white uh, film clips. I didn't get knocked over or anything. I didn't feel it was too bad. I think it's actually much better than starting all the way down on, you know, before Main Street where everybody's really wanting to run to get to something here you know they're already almost there so it's not I think it's not as crazy at right. all right it's definitely more civilized and it, this was a very chilly day too it was a cold day and it was an uncrowded day in the Magic Kingdom although you maybe wouldn't know it from this particular angle and I mean here you can see everybody just kind of walking I, I didn't think it was uh, I thought it was really a, a very nice way of doing it I, I definitely prefer it so here's the look at Mine Train uh, immediately after park open this must be five minutes after nine here and you could see we're already up to about 30 minutes and uh you know and nobody in Tomorrowland, okay. and that's why we went there <laughs> so we ended up going on the astro orbiter we almost never do this because really the astro orbiter the line can be short but it takes a long time because there's so few guests who can actually ride it it says five it's not five Look at it's this. like zero this is <laughs> spectacular my whole point was let's try to go the opposite of what most people would do and it kind of paid off as a matter of fact when we rode the astro orbiter after it finished they let us stay on we didn't even have to get off and we were able to do a second flight which was kind of fun and we probably could have if we asked probably could have done a third but by then more guests were coming up you know i mean it just it it very quickly, it starts to get a, a little busier, um, but it was nice to be able to ride. I haven't ridden this in quite some time. One thing I like about this particular Astro Orbiter, and this was formerly the Star, Star Jets. Jets, yeah, is it's elevated, you know? It's sort of like NASA having to take the uh, the tower going up to your rocket, you know, where Disneyland and Disneyland Paris, it's, it's on a ground level. So it's an added uh, bonus thrill, I guess you could say, to be up higher to start this ride. Well, you can see the Grand Floridian, you can see uh, Disney's Space Contemporary Mountain. Resort. Well, you know, just, well, Space Mountain's right there, right. but I just mean you can see uh, even further. Uh, so that's, a, it's kind of fun to see what you can kind of notice in the background. I mean, you could probably almost see the Disney's Wilderness Lodge. Um, so this is really a, a fun attraction. I think every Castle Park has one, except that Shanghai has uh, jet packs, yeah. which I think is still similar. Do you know if this was an opening day attraction? Do you remember? Uh, I actually looked it up and I think it, I don't think it was quite opening day. It was like a few years in, I believe. Now this was definitely an opening day attraction, the Tomorrowland Speedway. So the Tomorrowland Speedway also was not named Tomorrowland Speedway when it opened. It's gone through a couple of names. It uh, started out as the Grand Prix Raceway and mm -hmm. I remembered as that. And I remember 
I used to like hit everybody with the cars because back then nobody cared. <laughs> well, you're a kid. You were a kid then. <laughs> but I you know think... enough to not do it now. Right, but hopefully. I, I don't think they told us not to. I think it was just assumed well, that I you were. I suspect they fully told. No, you I not. thought it was assumed you were going to hit somebody. <laughs> so now, of course, I don't hit anybody. But uh, but back then, it, I mean, everybody was hitting everybody, and now it's not. It's not. I like really that. think that's because we were kids. Because well, I, no. I had the same exact experience as you. Is that I would have my brother or my sister on here, and of course I would hit them as hard as possible throughout the whole ride and i think that's because we just didn't pay any attention now, to the what we were told not to do you don't really see as much hitting now as you used to oh, so you still see a some a little hitting. bit but not not like it used to be and also you're only going just you're going seven miles per hour a full seven um this is a nearly half mile racetrack but it's not as long as it used to be we even saw when the du new dumbos went in how they uh, kind of carved the track a little bit smaller. Right, they made I, the curve. This this curve right, right here, they made it uh, less of a curve. So it's been cut a number of times, mm -hmm. I think three times. I think it, it was three. So anyway, a lot of fun. I always like doing that. There's been rumors that it may be going away at some point, so I want to make sure we ride this as much as possible. So, I mean, Tokyo just closed theirs. I'm hoping that won't happen here. This has been one of my favorites ever since I was a little kid. You know, back when you couldn't even drive a car, I mean, I've been writing this for like, whatever, 35 years. I'd actually like to see years. it expanded, know. you know, have it be like California's Autopia. That would be wonderful. Make it a, a real e-ticket. And I like the Paris one, too. I think that one's a, a fun one. So we met Alice in her winter garb there. Really, winter garb just means a little jacket there, but it was nice. It's a little different look for her. Well, she she sometimes wears the cape, but I've never seen her yet with the hood. So uh, so that was kind of a fun little meet and greet. And it wasn't that cold. It was, what, 50 degrees or something? It was cold. For you, that for is me, extremely, that's, that's right, freezing. Like in the house, under 70 to me is like I have to have socks on my hands because I get so cold. <laughs> so, um, but to me, it was chilly. It was a... It was a chilly day. Alice was a lot of fun. She was talking about the white rabbit. And after we met her, I saw the big cheese here coming uh, coming by me out of nowhere. And you so, never see, uh, never you never see, see him. That, yeah. He was doing a photo shoot. So a little change here at the Tortuga Tavern, at least new to us. It's, been, it's probably been here for a while. But now we have turkey legs, hot dogs, and chocolate chip cookies. Very pirate-like. Yeah, not, not too exciting. But uh, I don't think it's probably open very much although this was a kind of slow day so who knows i, I we're not the, in the taco Magic Kingdom, salads so i like those those were really good so i'm and they had i think they had tacos at one point i mean mm -hmm. they oh, had yeah. actually pretty good food so anyway just a little update we didn't know and now we are on the top level of the omnibus and i really enjoy the omnibus it, it is such a short uh, time period though it started at nine and uh, they were loading at 10 and that was going to be their last last uh, run la yeah 10 right and we met somebody named the toyo who watches the show so uh thank you for stopping us um but we then got onto the omnibus and headed uh down because we couldn't go the other way because they weren't going to be running it anymore and you could see why i mean look at all the people coming in it was getting really crowded i think most people really come in around 10 o'clock and you could see that after we left the gates too the gates were packed completely opposite of when we walked in just a few hours earlier i wouldn't want to be driving the bus uh, driving the bus <laughs> very down. talented to do that <laughs> yes and now we're at disney's polynesian village resort we had booked the best friends breakfast featuring lilo and stitch uh, we also saw Mickey and Pluto. They are uh, the two friends who they could be a different characters, but I think that's usually who who's there. Um, this is the waiting area. It looks very crowded, like it was a long line and a, the waiting area looked crowded, but we arrived about 15 minutes early and we actually were seated a minute before our reservation time, so it wasn't bad. Right, they give you a little buzzer that kind of uh, blinks when mm -hmm. it's time to go in, so not too bad when you meet your server. You come here, sort of like the Ohana for dinner, and uh, you're given some really nice bread. So the bread was really the highlight of the meal because it's actually it unique, is. and I think it has coconut and pineapple in it, and then there was fruit. I only like the watermelon and the pineapple, and there were three watermelon chunks and one pineapple chunk, so I... Didn't eat a lot of fruit this time. And jungle juice. It is like jungle juice. And uh, I can't think of the name of it at the moment. But if you've had jungle juice, that's what you're getting here. And uh, this is what the meal is. And it's family style. And you can have as much as you want. It's sort of like going to Captain Cook's. It's nothing fancy. Uh, you do have Mickey waffles. You have 
uh, bacon and potatoes and eggs. And again, you're kind of, it, it feels like you're at a counter service location as far as quality of the food. Right. It, it, they call it a skillet and you can have as many skillets as you want. But the real reason, the only reason to go here really is to meet these characters. And they have some excellent character interactions. Here is Lilo right now. Gave, gave you a nice big hug before. And what you just mentioned, I mean, for us, like Boma, food quality for breakfast right. and the variety is so much more than this is but you are here for the characters if you're not looking for characters i don't see any reason to really come here right um except for maybe dinner we haven't done that in a while um but we had uh mickey and you can see pluto uh coming too oh look at this awesome mickey uh, has seen his own uh, own figure there yes, in I'm the sure. waffle so uh, <laughs> But it was so much fun. I love the character interactions. We should mention only Stitch has a photo pass person. Actually, he had two photo pass people with him because he's throwing the breakfast, of course. He's throwing the party. So I found it interesting. If you want it for us, we wanted pictures together with the characters. And the only one that we can do that with was uh, was Stitch. Well, unless you ask somebody to somebody else to take the photo. Um, and I thought it was interesting because it's Lilo and Stitch and friends. And yet... Stitch is the one throwing the party and not Lilo and Stitch. Right. So I thought that was interesting. Now, this is a little parade that happens every half hour. Adults and kids can join in. I did indeed join in. Of course, I was recording yes. it. So that was my excuse. But uh, a lot of fun. Uh, they play music. It's just a, a very fun morning. The whole thing should only take about an hour for most normal people. We took a little longer because we were doing video and things like that. But uh, it's really a pretty quick, quick event. Right. I mean, we could have even done it in less than an hour. The skillet came out pretty quick. And it, I mean, how much of the same thing can you eat over and over well, again? Well, I, I have advice. I have advice on how to very much improve this whole experience. Two words, tanga toast. That would be nice. If you had tanga toast and then for dessert, perhaps you had Dole Whip. I know it's breakfast, but can you imagine how awesome this event would be with just the addition of tanga toast to the skillet? Here's another look. This is skillet number two for us. Even if you want just a little we bit, didn't eat all. they'll still yeah, bring they'll you bring a second. Thing. This is a smaller skillet, but uh, if tanga toast was added to that, I would be happy. And again, why not have dessert for breakfast? Well, I, I'm happy just to go to Captain Cook's and get and get Tonga Toast, and you can do that, so. Anyway, <laughs> we're ahead of ourselves. Now we're at Epcot. We went and signed up for a really, really fun, uh, extra paid event at the Festival of the Arts. So um, we signed up for an ink and paint class, and I really love that we're already seeing where it's almost looking like flower and garden oh, yeah, coming, you yeah. know, and, and more and more of that's going to be coming. So this cost us $39, and we had a 15% annual pass discount, so around $35, and we received this pin. We uh, we made a cell, and or we didn't make. You were actually we able to a, paint with a a, and make yourself a real cell. This is a, a very similar class um, to something that they used to have at the Disney Institute that I did take That's back right, then. years ago, back in like the early two thousands, I believe. Right. Uh, well, yeah, around two thousand uh, and late nineties, I believe. Um, Lynn Ripberger, who has worked on films like Little Mermaid and Mulan was one who led it. Her husband was there as well. Um, there were a couple of others, and it lasted about an hour. We learned a little bit about cells, including production cells. I, I don't remember all of it, but... I did video. record the whole thing, which is very good. <laughs> so, yeah, he recorded it, so I can learn all It was all very about informative. It was nice to learn a little history about cells. You know, cells aren't really done anymore, so it's sort of almost a, a lost art, really. So we, uh, we everybody had the same cell, and that's with, with Mickey, and the $35 includes, again, the painting of the cell. We also received a bag and um, a, and the pin. So I thought that was a, actually a really good value. And this was a lot of fun. So much fun. And there's one more of these being offered. It was on February 17th. So there's still a chance if they have availability. And I would highly recommend it. Right. And uh, what we didn't know when we made these... Uh, and we checked in at 1030. The class was from 11 to 12. It took several hours for the cell to dry. Three so hours. We, yeah. We had to come back between three and four to pick up our dried cell. So, I mean, it's good to know if you have plans to go to a different park or you're not going to be sticking around Epcot. 
So here I am making my, you know, my cell, but what I'm actually doing here is I made a little error and they give the you little the cleanup, little cleanup that's called. Yes, so I was cleaning up my my Mickey. I think you did a great job. It was it was a uh, very fun. It was very relaxing too. I mean, this is something I could see myself doing if they offer these kits like they used to. I don't believe they have them anymore. I would want to take the class again. You know, I don't have to take it in like a week. But uh, but if they did it next year, I would definitely want to do it again. And it is very frameable also. Mm -hmm. Now, they have free classes if you don't want to do a paid class. Why don't you tell me about some of those? Well, the same day that we were doing this, they had one on pointillism. They have uh, watermelon carving is something that they've had many times. Um, Wasn't there just, a brewing a brewing there class was a also? Home, a home brewing class. So there are several uh, uh, every day that they are free. And then uh, every day they have one that's paid and that... Like they have floral arranging and animation 101, I believe both are still coming up. So here is the finished product for you. I think you were very creative with the orange and you had to sort of make your own colors there. And, uh, and there is mine. I just went with the one color for Festival of the Arts. Anyway, a lot of fun. We also stuck around Epcot that day and we saw Donald here. And I thought it was kind of nice to get a picture with Donald uh, in his handiwork. He, even Donald is an artist. <laughs> well, I like that they do these drawings at some of the meet and greets and so it was nice to have uh, the photo with uh, with Donald. Well, and his... speaking of meet and greets, we had a surprise meet and greet here, and there is Max and Goofy, which was really fun. And we saw them together on the Disney Cruise Line once, um, but usually they aren't together, so so that was a lot of a lot of fun. And these are the type of meet and greets where you just kind of arrive and you see that it's going, and maybe it'll be going for twenty minutes or something. Uh, there was other ones, not just. Are we going to see other oh, characters? Oh, yeah, you're going to see a few other characters, I mean, characters you had, like, too. Mickey and maybe Donald and a bunch of others, and it's just such a short thing. So, you know, it's lucky I mean, there is Captain Hook. Get to see them. You know, there's Pooh. Pooh. These are characters that are not usually out wandering the uh, the mean streets of World Showcase. So, uh, so much fun. We always enjoy meeting the characters. And we always enjoy Epcot. We had a great time. And, uh, you know, that is another show. Can is you that believe another, it? Is that's that another, another show. show I believe that's another show. Well, thanks to MEI Mouse Fan Travel for sponsoring us. Definitely check out their website for uh, Disney deals. Not only deals, but they will help you plan your Walt Disney World in pretty much any other vacation that you can think of. Also, the allears.net newsletter. Check them out. Great information every week. All the information on how to subscribe is in the show notes. And we'll have a extended look at paddlefish next week we went not only to the multi-hour preview but we also had a brunch the next uh two days later we did brunch with some friends so make sure you're not hungry for next week's show because there's a <laughs> lot 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 of good food to be seen also when we were there we discovered a new store a theme towards beauty and the beast which was really really uh, better than i expected well it's the d living store which was christmas themed during the christmas time so this will be here a few months so it's definitely worth the at least checking out because it smells so good inside anyway thanks again for listening have a great week and we'll see you all next week have a great week